Alpha lipoic acid is a very popular nutrition supplement. In this video, I'll explain what it is, the biological effect in the cell, and the result of numerous randomized controlled trials in hypertension, obesity, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, peripheral neuropathy, and even COVID-19. Citations below. I'll start with an overview. Lipoic acid is naturally occurring. It's produced by cells in the liver, though the amount you'd consume in a nutritional supplement is much greater, sometimes a thousand times greater than your body would naturally make. It has various biological effects. For instance, it's a cofactor in different enzymes. In other words, it works with enzymes in the body to carry out metabolic reactions. I'll show you a few of those in a moment. It's also an antioxidant. In organic chemistry, oxidation refers to chemical reactions where carbon chains bind to oxygen atoms, and certain types of oxidative reactions can be damaging to the cell, so this has to be regulated. It also works on DNA. DNA, lipoic acid upregulates the transcription factor NRF2, which is normally activated in response to oxidative stress. This is probably part of how it works as an antioxidant. Of note, NRF2 is the target of certain multiple sclerosis drugs, the fumaric esters, such as Tecfidera and Vumerity. It also has an effect on glucose metabolism. It causes GLUT4, the glucose receptor in muscles, to move to the cell membrane, causing increased glucose uptake, regulating cell and blood glucose. I'll show a few of the metabolic reactions where lipoic acid is a cofactor. This is lipoic acid in the glycine cleavage system, which cleans up excess glycine. It's also involved in nucleic acid synthesis. Nucleic acids are the building blocks of DNA and RNA. Lipoic acid is also a cofactor in this alpha ketoacid dehydrogenase multi-enzyme complex, and you can see these are enzymes in key metabolic reactions like glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, so lipoic acid is really integral to normal function of the cell. It works as an antioxidant by working with other antioxidants, so here you can see the reactions where lipoic acid reduces the antioxidants coenzyme Q, vitamin C, and glutathione, which in turn activate by reducing vitamin E, which then acts as an antioxidant preventing potentially dangerous oxidative reactions within the cell. Lipoic acid is present in the diet. It's in various foods like organ meats, spinach, carrots, broccoli, yeast, and many others, but in very low amounts, and it's also poorly absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract. So practically speaking, if lipoic acid is beneficial, it's probably best to just take a supplement. Now, nothing I said so far means that taking lipoic acid supplements is beneficial. Maybe the body makes all that it needs, and you don't really need to take anything extra. The only way to prove if it's beneficial is to look at randomized controlled trials where lipoic acid is measured against placebo in specific conditions to see the actual results. Now, a lot of these studies are relatively small and not necessarily high quality, often unfunded, done at single institutions. After all, there's not a lot of money in nutritional supplements. It's a naturally occurring substance. It's unpatentable. It's not like a pharmaceutical company is going to spend $100 million trying to prove that lipoic acid works. So I'm going to look mostly at meta-analyses. These are studies that combine multiple randomized controlled trials, so we have a larger sample size and greater statistical power. First, we'll look at obesity. This is a meta-analysis of 12 randomized trials of alpha lipoic acid in obesity. A lot of the studies were lower dose. A typical dose of ALA supplement is 600 milligrams once or twice a day. Most of these studies had doses less than 600 milligrams a day, and they were shorter studies, average duration about 14 weeks. It did lead to weight loss, but marginally so. So alpha lipoic acid reduced weight versus placebo by only 0.69 kilograms, or about 1.5 pounds, but it was statistically significant, so it seems to have some effect. There was a trend towards lower body mass index by only 0.38, which was not statistically significant. Next is diabetes. This is a meta-analysis of 16 randomized trials in type 2 diabetes, a total of 1,035 participants, so a pretty big sample size, although all different doses, and of course with a meta-analysis you're looking at different doses, different quality of the supplement, more on that a little bit later. It did have a beneficial effect. Hemoglobin A1c, a blood test measuring long-term average blood glucose, 
decreased, but only by a tiny amount, by a mean of 0.17. So five is normal hemoglobin A1C, six is prediabetes, seven is diabetes. So 0.17 is small, but it was statistically significant. There was also a trend towards lower bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, by about five points, not statistically significant, and lower triglycerides by about 20 points. By the way, my name is Brandon Bieber. I'm a neurologist, and I report no financial conflict of interest, and I do not personally take this supplement, though I have recommended it to many people over the years for neuropathic pain. Speaking of which, this is a meta-analysis of lipoic acid in diabetic neuropathy in Germany. So in Germany, lipoic acid has been used for painful neuropathy for decades and is widely accepted as a standard treatment. And there is evidence for it. So in this study, eight of the 11, so the majority of the randomized trials of alpha lipoic acid, 600 milligrams a day, versus placebo showed a benefit. And they looked at this metric called total symptom score for painful diabetic neuropathy, and it reduced by an average of 1.05, which is a very modest effect, though many people taking a supplement for nerve pain are satisfied with any noticeable reduction in pain. And you can see it was barely statistically significant at P equals 0.04, but it was beneficial. This is another meta-analysis of three randomized controlled trials of lipoic acid it's 600 milligrams daily versus placebo in painful diabetic neuropathy. Now, if you read the abstract of the study, it says it was ineffective. However, two of these three studies showed a total symptom score reduction that was statistically significant, though if you look at the graph, you can see it's really only a slight benefit. To the left means favoring alpha lipoic acid, to the right means favoring placebo, and the overall effect was slightly statistically significant, P equals 0.03. So my opinion is the overall evidence does suggest it's effective in painful diabetic neuropathy, though has a modest effect. Does this apply to other forms of painful neuropathy or other forms of neuropathic pain? I couldn't find much evidence for that. Now we move to high blood pressure hypertension. This is a meta-analysis of 11 randomized trials, total of 674 participants getting alpha lipoic acid varying supplements. And you can see this graph to the left favors the treatment, alpha lipoic acid to the left of the zero line to the right favors the placebo. And you can see it did have a benefit beneficial effect, though again, it was modest. So systolic blood pressure, the top number dropped by an average of 5.5, and diastolic blood pressure, the bottom number dropped by an average of 3.4, and it was highly statistically significant, p-value less than 0.001. So if your blood pressure is 140 over 90, it might go down to 135 over 87. Not a huge difference, but it's something. They use doses typically less than 8 800 milligrams a day, and it was effective within three months, so that's about how long you should wait to see if it works. What about multiple sclerosis? Now, this is just a single center randomized trial, not a meta-analysis, done at Oregon Health Sciences University. They looked at people with secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. This is a form of MS where people have slowly increasing symptoms over time, and they studied lipoic acid 1,200 milligrams daily versus placebo. And the primary outcome was brain atrophy, shrinkage of the brain, which is accelerated in MS. However, people taking lipoic acid had brain atrophy of only 0.21% per year, which is actually roughly the expected rate in normal aging. Those getting placebo had a rate of atrophy of 0.65% per year, which would be more expected in progressive multiple sclerosis. So it essentially completely stopped accelerated brain atrophy. Now, they weren't able to prove any actual clinical benefit improvement of symptoms. They did study time 25-foot walk, how fast you can walk 25 feet, and there was a trend towards people getting lipoic acid walking faster, but p-value only 0.06, not quite statistically significant. As a side note, the senior author of the study is Dr. Dennis Bordet. I remember many years ago, he interviewed me for a fellowship position at Oregon Health Sciences University and he was supposed to call me at a specific time and I had a family situation come up and I didn't take his phone call. I was so embarrassed about it, but when I called him later, he was 
pure class and completely downplayed it. And I have a ton of respect for Oregon Health Sciences University in general. They've published many excellent studies on multiple sclerosis in nutrition and lifestyle. The last study I'll mention got a ton of press when it was published. This is from February 2020, the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was a randomized trial done in Wuhan, China in people with severe COVID-19 infection. Sample size, only 17 people. Ran randomized to placebo or 1200 milligrams intravenous alpha lipoic acid daily. And if you look at the graph, there's a huge difference in mortality, a roughly 40% absolute difference in mortality at 30 days, alpha lipoic acid in red, most people surviving, placebo in blue. Of course, it's not statistically significant. The sample size is so small, p-value of 0.09. Does it actually work? Your guess is as good as mine, but many people prescribed it just based on this study. I'll mention a few miscellaneous topics. Lipoic acid isn't very well absorbed, and it's best absorbed on an empty stomach, so it's probably better to take it without food. Now, the R enantiomer may be more effective. So in organic chemistry, there are right-handed and left-handed versions of molecules. And even though they have the same physical properties, they have different biological effects. For instance, you can imagine one version of the molecule may bind to an enzyme and be a successful cofactor, whereas the other left-handed version may not be. And there's basic science evidence that the R enantiomer may be better. And so if you were looking up a supplement, you would look for R alpha lipoic acid. Now, typically, if you buy alpha lipoic acid that is not labeled RALA, it's probably racemic, meaning an equal mixture of both the right and left-handed versions. In other words, you may actually have to take double the dose. So 1,200 milligrams of racemic ALA, which would probably be labeled alpha lipoic acid, is equivalent to 600 milligrams of R ALA. It's not known, at least based on my analysis of the research, whether taking purified R alpha lipoic acid is superior. It can cause some mild side effects such as gastrointestinal upset and heartburn. There are also potentially very rare serious side effects. So there's a heart problem known as QT prolongation. This is diagnosed based on an abnormal EKG, and it's rare, but if someone is known to have this condition or is taking other drugs that can cause QT prolongation, it may be best to avoid alpha lipoic acid. There's also a rare autoimmune syndrome called insulin autoimmune syndrome, where the body generates antibodies against insulin and it can cause changes in blood glucose and be potentially serious. There's some case reports from Japan, so it may be more common in Japanese people. I had never seen or heard of this before. Credit to Dr. Connor Curley for pointing this out to me. But overall, alpha lipoic acid is extremely safe and serious side effects would be exceedingly rare. But keep in mind that you may not be getting alpha lipoic acid at at all, this is an article based on independent testing of some alpha lipoic acid supplements from Japan, and they found that they didn't actually contain the substance, so it may be best to buy from trusted brands with an actual reputation at stake to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. And I'd be interested to know if you've taken lipoic acid and what were your results and side effects, particularly if you have painful diabetic neuropathy or another form of neuropathic pain, and let me know in the comments if you have a suggestion for a different video.